What's up, everybody? I am here with the famous, the iconic, the talented Taylor Gray. What's up? Introduce yourself to the people. What's up? What's up? I'm Taylor Gray. I am an LA-based R&B artist and a friend of Adrian, and I'm just really happy to be here. So thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I have so many things I want to ask. But I think I want to start off with um, just like your process creating this song, or maybe, you know, I'll start off with like the story of the song, because like, if you listen to, to you, like mm -hmm. you're talking, you're, you're, you're like really saying some stuff, like it's yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems, like I said, you're telling a story and I really am curious to see like, where your mindset was when you're writing mm -hmm. it or what you want people to take from it, how it came about, like, okay, I'm really curious. <laughs> well, it will, for those that hear the song, lyrically, it sounds like I'm already famous, which I purposefully wrote it actually from a futuristic perspective, kind of um, seeing where my life was headed in a certain direction um, because I moved out to LA in 2020, mid-pandemic for the pursuit of my musical ambitions. And if you've ever been to LA, um, if you've ever been a transplant in LA, you know that it's kind of like um, uh, a fight to the top. And so there's all kinds of ways that people can lose themselves in clout chasing and all kinds of like image-based things. And so I kind of did something where I saw myself already where I want to be, but having forgotten who I am now and kind of my fears about being somebody different, um, when I make it and so the song is essentially about seeing the people or maybe in kind of in a way one specific person that I was really fond of at the time um, and making sure that I don't lose like that core feeling of what really makes me feel good what makes me feel happy because um, I am happy right now in this process and so no matter what happens I want to always retain that I don't want to be someone in the future looking back on where I'm at now like damn I really was happier then so that's kind of what I modeled the song after wow okay yeah because I could definitely tell like the I don't know like the you're in the future but looking back at yourself or looking back at your decisions mm -hmm. you know and I feel like it's so relatable even though you said like it's something where you envision yourself to be I just feel like um it's a relatable thing because even now you've reached a certain point you weren't where you are now two three years ago you know and you and even in this moment you're looking back at certain decisions that you made and like oh, mm -hmm. so exactly good. somewhere like oh so I think oh my gosh all the time right yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that was like a really unique kind of perspective to write a song from if that makes sense. Thank you. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, okay, that's cool. Like, a little and it, it was different for me. Um, I purposely went into this, um, uh, the, I guess, this project that I'm working on with a, 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 a future perspective, like a forward thinking perspective, um, and kind of thinking about, I was really inspired visually a, a lot as well, and like by uh, futurism, by digital art, by um science fiction things like the fifth element like a lot of technological like just kind of interesting futuristic uh ideas and so i kind of wanted to play it up a little bit by also thinking of myself in a future element and so that's why like a lot of the visuals you see are kind of like blurred out like my face is blurred out um you can't really tell if it's the past the present or the future you can't tell if i'm actually there or if i'm not and yeah. so that's kind of the point and that's kind of the direction that I'm going in moving forward right now as well. <laughs> I really feel it. I really feel it. And I love the, um, I love like how you had two of you projected onto your face. And <laughs> ours was like, I was like, okay, that's cool as fuck. Thank um, you. I think I want to touch on like just overall things like um, just because I can obviously relate to this. <laughs> so yeah. I want to know what are some of the things that you enjoy about being an independent creative, but some of the things that are also challenging about Ooh. <laughs> being Ooh. creative. So it's like, you know, both sides of the coin kind of thing. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like this is like one of those things that you understand uh, we think about probably 24 seven in our like when we're not thinking about something else like that's kind of like the natural state that we're thinking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, what I love most about being an independent artist is that I have the complete freedom and agency to do whatever I want to do. Um, so that means that if I want to make any kind of project um, I want, I can go ahead and do that. I don't have to like kind of I don't have someone else kind of direct me what to do or someone else that um, is controlling what I do because they're the ones pumping money into me. So that's really at the forefront of why I like being independent. I like having all of the rights to my music. I like making the money for me. I like doing what my heart desires because the reason I make music and the reason that I write music is because I have to, I kind of feel like I need that as my outlet. That's my version of expression. So if I'm not being authentically me, then it's yeah. kind of not. Point. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you get it um, yeah. but on the other side of that um, I am funding myself and it's already tough enough right now in 2022 with inflation and with student loans that they just refuse yeah. to cancel I'm just like what <laughs> <laughs> and, know. right and so um, and living in LA I mean it's very expensive to survive out here um, so I kind of have to be very frugal. I don't go on vacations. I don't do things that cost a lot of money because all of the money that I keep to the side is for the purpose of funding my music, which music is something that you lose money on pretty much making. You don't really see, you don't really see money out of it until like you were at a specific place. And that's more so from the the residuals and the side projects that come from music. So, um, but it's completely worth it. You know, it's worth, the struggle um to be who I want to be because that's the that's really why I did it in the first place I wouldn't I think of it sort of like you know um being an artist like as um kind of paint like you can think of it in any way like painting or painting uh on a canvas or something and then there's you know um a factory that just stamps yeah the same yeah. like drawing over and over and over again I feel like that's kind of the um industry fuel version of the music industry and then like uh the other side of it is being an actual artist <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true and i um it literally ties back to what you're saying about being an independent artist and being able to do whatever you want to do the people who a lot in a lot of these places who are at the top of things like the executives they're a, a lot of them will go for like all right if it's easy money it's easy money just stamp mm-hmm. stamp 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 like you said yeah like factory um versus the other artists who might not release as regularly or they might not have like 10 trillion streams a week but they still yeah. make something that resonates you know what i mean mm-hmm. like yeah I, that's what like i just those artists speak to me more <laughs> like they just do they just do you know absolutely i agree so, with that hmm, i want to also ask you about like just the the process of creating music so for me <laughs> it's like uh, there's things I can do now that I'm just like I had <laughs> no idea how to do like really? three years ago yeah like three four years ago I didn't know I didn't know like just like of course like writing and stuff that's like cool for me well if I'm talking about like the technical side like producing stuff like or, or just like you know recording your own voice or putting yeah track like I want to um, just talk about your process doing this and like how could you see like a like your things being easier to do or you know what I mean creating yeah. this sound or creating this song versus like your past but the your past stuff is amazing too so let's not even oh thank you play about that well, no. I want to preface this by saying that I am I don't have an at home studio at all um, I want to have one but for the purpose of crafting demos for other artists I don't really have I don't really desire personally to have an at home studio and recording strictly myself from my bedroom um, just because not that I couldn't do it if I wanted to but because I really like the idea of quality and so if someone has put in time and has gone to school or done their 10,000 hours to become skilled at something I'd rather work directly with someone that can do it quicker do it more efficiently and can also work with me to get my ideas across so I actually go into a studio I pay for the studio time to do it Um, what I do is the vocal production so like any kind of vocals that you hear any kind of stacking layers um, 
And then also how they're mixed in. That's me. I am at the helm of that. So while I'm not the one clicking the buttons, I'm the one that's directing the person clicking yeah, the buttons. That's exactly what you mean. But it's that. Yeah. Um, um, it sounds like that's what it sounds like that's the case because of the way that the layering is done and how it meshes well into your songs so it's, mm -hmm. it literally sounds like you're the one doing it so. oh really and like yeah. of course like there's so many things i i'm sure i i'm not i'm not completely familiar with um but i can do a decent amount um i know what i'm referring to when i think that something needs to be edited or something needs to be tweaked um because i just have a really strong ear i spend a lot of time like uh, and I've spent a lot of time in my childhood listening to music and really studying um, different things. And I also played an instrument. I played trumpet, so I can read you music. The trumpet. Yeah, I was in like symphonies, bands, all of that stuff. So yeah. I've I've worked in the realm of a lot of different types of musical things, and so my ear is just kind of strong. Um, for me, it's just I didn't start making music like actually recording myself until I was about 22 and I was in college and going into law school. So I just didn't really pick up the trade of actually sitting and producing and like engineering my own music by myself because I was just so busy um, with school. Uh, so I would like to learn, but again, I think that for me, the process of music is about what I'm really trying to feel, my writing, um, what I hear in my head and then putting that down onto, uh, you know, into in the studio and on the mic and getting that you know that really that feeling of reward and putting in the hard work and you know the long hours of mixing and re-recording and stacking and um all of the things that is required in order to make a record actually masterful and actual quality that's kind of what i focus on and then from there i also start envisioning the visuals and the cover art who i want to collaborate with you know the style of my clothing um any colors that come to mind that should be emphasized um i really start to just completely draft out a marketing plan from the beginning even before <laughs> i've even recorded so yeah i mean it's like literally time back to the independent stuff it's just like with you, when you're do, you're doing when you're working like you have to be everything like I mm -hmm. remember so someone asked on Twitter like what's the hardest part about being an independent artist and I said you have to be everything everywhere all at once and I'm just like it's it, like that's just, yes you have to think about the fashion you have to think about the visuals you have to think about the you know the the art you have to think about like the marketing yes but, and like anybody that you 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 work with that can do things a little better i mean that that costs money so yes. you know you save money by doing more things yourself but not everybody is designed to do everything so like while i can dress i can dress myself for something like this um eventually i would like someone that styles me for certain things because it just puts a little bit of stress off of me and allows me to focus on the actual performance, the actual music. Um, so it's really just a trade-off. And, um, you know, being an artist doesn't mean that you, if you're not doing, just because you're not doing every little thing exactly. doesn't mean you're not an artist. An artist, you know I mean? right. Especially if you have something that, you, like like I said, I know I'm good at writing. I'm good at, like, I can be like, mm -hmm. like, um, like how you are in the with with the layering and stuff like I can be in the studio while someone else is making a beat or something I can play the piano I can I can be like that 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 move this here put this here I, I might not know how to like click 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 but I know what I want you know but like you said knowing your strengths allows you to work more efficiently so you can be like no right. I'm not good at that so yeah if you're good at art you're good at this or whatever like take it from me, do what mm -hmm. you gotta do. And that's yeah. it. So I get and it. also I'm like an extrovert. And so I prefer um, being in the room with somebody else and kind of having that natural chemistry. Uh, I don't work with just any engineer. Uh, I work with engineers that understand me and that I understand um, because, you know, when you put two people together, it's not going to, you know, be this like if you put these two people together and then switch out a person it's not going to create the same output so right. it's really important that like people that you work with are people that you actually gel with um i think also a lot of times like there's this pressure to work with people that have a specific name or reputation just for the yeah. fact of working with them but yeah. a lot of times they're not going to want to work with you they're just doing it because like you're a transaction your your money to make and so it's also about like really understanding and feeling the connection because i've had better output 
with people that are charge me way less and are just getting started with me than people that are already established trying to that I'm trying to work with you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I know exactly what you mean and I think um like even just like everybody who's up and coming or whatever working on their shit includes me shit you know like mm -hmm. I think that just because so, someone has like x amount of followers or x thousand x mil whatever does not necessarily mean that first of all y'all audiences will understand each other second of all that y'all understand each other so i i definitely mm -hmm. agree with what you're saying like the vibe mm -hmm. is definitely much and the vibe and the connection and the realness of the art is more important than like oh you got this many that many da, 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 da. like that doesn't exactly exactly and like, then like you don't want to lend yourself to the the clout chasing epidemic yeah, like, like when you when you think about like people forget to realize when you're like um looking for whether it be a producer or a collaborator or um you know a videographer a photographer or something like that and you're purposefully seeking out people that have big followings that is clout chasing like in a <laughs> sense like that is that is looking for a come up you're you know like and that's there's something wrong with that on, in a way like you know you're, you're purposely working with people that you know expand your reach yeah. but there is a, i mean you can't be too mad when people that are already up here don't really desire to work with you down here because they know they they you benefit from it more than they do like there's kind of like that at play so um you know all, but <laughs> i mean i see exactly what you're saying and also i feel like um how do I say? I think that sometimes people view stratospheric rises as like 100% amazing and great all the time. Mm -hmm. And it may not be, I, I mean, I just feel like the more solid something is, a connection is, the more the shit will last. So yeah. if you're just chasing after random motherfuckers who don't even understand your vision, it, you know, it, it, it's like, okay you get a bump but then like what does it really what does it really do you know? yeah there's there's a lot of that there's a lot of that i think um you know yeah. i think i just think that um it's really easy to kind of see you want the results so bad that you'll just kind of work with anybody or do what it takes to get there but um for me it took i mean i've been making music for my birthdays this weekend so about seven years now it's oh, crazy no, and uh, thank you uh yeah seven years literally about probably this week about seven years yeah. and um so for me it's taken a lot of you know checking my own ego at being hurt um yeah. and having to grow up and be realistic with myself and be honest with myself about what I really want the trade-offs you know of making music and seeing what my end goal is you know someone like me I don't really you know like the Met Gala was yesterday um as we're filming this yeah. and you know while that'd be great to like envision yourself at the Met Gala like I don't need to be someone that's at that level to be so successful in music and so content in music like I see artists you know like uh Baby Tate or Free Runway mm -hmm. or Dylan Sinclair or and they just um, it feels like they're in control Sid. of their shit. yeah like, and there's a lot of community at that level too yeah. there's a lot of like I saw that picture today of Kiana Lede, Victoria Monet and Joyce Rice together and like all three of them are very successful and they're and doing amazing things and they're still very relevant but they're just not like they're they're not at that level where they're oversaturated or they have this crazy team that's pushing them to work with just any main to make it sound anybody on the track yeah right yeah. and so yeah. i look at victoria monet and kiana lede and them and i think oh i'd much rather be at that level because i just love the sense of community i love that they have a sense of freedom about themselves they can write for other people they can be behind the scenes they can be in, they can be making music for themselves and it's it works for them and they can live their life and people are also also people are more happy and more receptive for them on a personal basis like when they have children and relationships they're less <laughs> scrutinizing and so um that was my personal trade-off and so for me like i don't look at names anymore when i'm working with people i'm not like oh this person is gonna get me these like nah yeah, no, um, it's just like it's maybe but may, yeah that, i mean of course that's a part of it. like this marketing it's the it's the thing you know but i think like I don't know. I'm a true creative and I can see that you are as well. So like if the if the 
the energy in the room is great, then everything else I think will fall into place. Like, you know, so. Yeah, just yeah. gotta get in the room and that's what I'm working on. That's why that's I'm out it. here. That's, yeah. so for me, it's just a matter of getting in the room. Cause you know, in LA, in any, in this day and age, in any place, cause of the internet, um, it's tough getting in the rooms that you want to get in because, you know, just because I, I have my sights set on a specific level of success doesn't mean it's easier to get in. Yeah. So. Um, because those same people are working with those very people, those, you know, Chris Browns and those Drakes and those, those are the, those are the people that are working with them. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of trying and persevering and knowing, being really truthful about what you want and what you really want in your art to, and what you want it to reflect. That's kind of been um, the purpose of this single to you has been really restructuring what I want and how I want my music to be delivered and how I want it to be received. I really feel like this is the first time I've taken control of that and not thought so much about what, what are people going to think? People want All of this, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely get it. And I think you've made a, a really great decision. And like I said, I think the, um, the way, the, the perspective that you chose to write the song of course, I'm obsessed with like music and harmony, so I'm hearing all that shit. Yeah, yeah. already, you know. So, so mm -hmm. but I think that this was a really good decision for you to be like, fuck what other people want. You know, I'm gonna write and I'm gonna, I'm gonna approach this from like how I see it, from my perspective. So, um, yeah. but yeah, like, so the time is running a little bit. So I want you just tell the people, you know, where they can find mm -hmm. you, where they can find mm -hmm. a single, all that good <laughs> stuff. And yeah, the fun part, the pro the promo plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, once again, my name is Taylor Gray. That's Gray with an A. You can find me on Instagram at official Taylor Gray or at Twitter at Tay Gray Official. Follow me on Twitter at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> to you is available on all streaming platforms. It's even on SoundCloud, on Audio Mac, on YouTube. There's a full length visualizer. It's available on Bandcamp. And so, yeah, if you find me on any socials, there will be links in my bio and in my pinned posts that will take you directly to the single and you can follow it. It's your own choosing uh, at whatever streaming service. And so thanks so much. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for talking about the single. It's been really Listen, I'm just happy to be here because I love this show. I was afraid. I was like, is he gonna ask me some questions about celebrities or something? Because like, no, let me like get no, my game face no, on. Chill, chill, I was like, let me put my game face on because it might get a little uh, messy up in here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, not today. Not today. <laughs> Dodged a bullet, not getting canceled this time. <laughs> so well, happy. Thank you for stopping by and chilling with me um yeah really thank wish you good luck it's amazing single amazing song and yeah i appreciate it, it. and we got to get you on like my instagram live when you drop music or something we got to like do this like in reverse yeah. you know what i mean i'm down i'm down <laughs> i've always wanted to pl i've always wanted to play oprah so <laughs> hopefully i did a good job you know bouncing it you know bouncing ideas like let me were you silent right? or were you silent <laughs> yes were you silent <laughs> <laughs> literally like where are my glasses i just be like hmm. hmm okay what team what team am i gonna glean from this okay <laughs> no seriously well, though adrian thank again. you yeah no problem thanks again <laughs>